and I must say that till today, most of our work is still done by those simple machines. But going forward, we've been able to acquire some sophisticated um, machines. This is what we call the scoring machine. It aids in finishing up the product and making it more neat, comparable to what we import from abroad. I must say that we have had production issues, and with the way the brand is growing, people have come in to advise that why don't you go to Turkey or China to manufacture. But it's not something that sits well with our core belief or our core ideology. We believe that whatever is done elsewhere in the world can be done in Ghana here. If it is about building capacity, we have to build the capacity of our young um, shoemakers to get to the level where, as a company, we can also produce in mass to meet all the demands that we have. Currently, we are overridden by demand, you know. So, um, these are our products. And as he rightly said, we do men's dress shoes, which is our flagship product. We do unisex sandals and slippers. We also do contract manufacturing for senior high schools. And over the years, we've manufactured for schools like Infansepem, GSTS in Taprade, Accra Girls, St. Mary's, Asaman Kesi, and um, some other schools. We also do safety boots or, um, or security boots. We use mainly leather for the upper parts. When we say upper, these are the upper. And for the sole, we use what we call rubber sheets. We have different types of rubber. Those who ply um, clock shoes, will normally tell you, I want the rubber sole, but for them, they meant it is very soft. But here, because of our terrain, we use very hard sole. The top executives, like the CEO of CTFM, will wear a shoe with a leather sole. For them, they move straight away from their rooms to their cars to their offices. They don't walk, they don't walk very often, like you and I. The, the, our target market, which is the, the working class, the young professionals, you know, we do a lot of working, so we use a sole that is very durable for our terrain. <laughs> In an industry such as shoe manufacturing, for that matter, fashion, product innovation is not something that we should even talk about because we need that to survive in the industry. I have a sociology background from the University of Ghana. I don't have anything art in me. So when I started the shoe company four years ago, I needed designs. So what we did was we asked our customers to bring designs so that we manufacture for them, what we call custom made. And we were very amazed to know that there is a drop of art in everybody, you know. People bring their designs, we manufacture. If it is nice, we keep it. So for the past four years, that is how we have generated our designs. So we got to a point in time that we were unable to do the customize again because the designs they brought were fast moving. And it, it took a longer time to now customize than to produce an original, an existing design. Then again, we also study fashion trends. When I meet you, before I shake your hands, I've already watched what you are wearing, you know, to inform us what the young guys were wearing. We go to the sites to do to see what the other international brands were doing. So by so doing, we had a wide range of designs, and then um, our our materials leather we import. We buy from importers who actually bring them from Italy and now Brazil. So with the current free fall of the city, you can imagine where our production figures are. We also one of our unique selling proposition is quality. You know, um, we have had a lot of people who started with us for the past four years, and they will call and say, Jack, shoe and say that. I mean, they've been wearing the shoe for a very long time. It doesn't get worth for them to come and buy another one. We realized that in terms of competition, we don't have local shoe manufacturers. We were competing with foreign brands. When I asked a lot of all the young guys here to tell me the brand of shoe they are wearing, I bet. Only few people like Bernard Avla and um, Kujua Kutub Watin will be able to say they are wearing horseman shoes. Most of you don't know the brand you are wearing. So we don't compromise on quality. We want to pitch such that if you can afford Faragamond, and indeed, most of our clients who print our shoes are people who, by the click of a button, can buy shoes anywhere in the world. But after they print our shoe for the first time, 
it was comfortable, it was com quality. And when the president said the shoes were comfortable, the guy meant it. I mean, they are so comfortable. <laughs> um, so these are a collection of um, our shoes in our ultramodern showroom at Kukumlimli. Yes, when it comes to marketing, we don't have a budget for Milwaukee Brown. So we have our own innovative ways for marketing. We use celebrity. <laughs> We use celebrity endorsement. When you come to buy our shoe and them, um, you have the following. We plead with you, we ask you that you take a photograph with us and we put it on our social media and you do as well. But Ochiame Kwame is officially the feet of horseman shoes. Apart from him, we have quite a notable person, of course, the number one gentleman of the land, proudly showing off his pair of horseman shoes. And let me say, let me mention where I met um, the president. I met him at a meeting at Pujasi Lodge where they have invited business people to talk about the business environment. After my presentation, it was a very casual conversation. Indeed, he encouraged us to be very frank and open. So after my presentation, I just, shared, I just said casually, Mr. President, you have to start wearing horseman shoes. So. Then everybody in the room laughed. Then it's okay, after the meeting, um, he will give me his size and a number to call when the shoes are ready. That was the Wednesday before the Tuesday when he went to Parliament. So we did for him and delivered on Sunday, only hoping that he will wear, and lo and behold, he wore it and gave us that massive endorsement. And uh, we are still reeling in it, you know. As, <laughs> as we speak now, we don't even have much talk because um, since that endorsement, of course, the awareness was just massive. I have asked brand and marketing experts to give me a figure as to if I was paying the president, how much would I have paid him? Nobody has been able to come up with a figure. They just, um, you can't pay, you can't pay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, apart from sales increasing, it has also become more or less a tourist destination for a lot of people. Taxi drivers, especially when they drive by and they see the signpost, they park their car and walk in. Ah, you know, and most of them want to see the exact shoe that he wore. So we had a few on sale. So we showed them that this is what the president wore. Then we have my own good friend, Bernard Avle. Bernard sit on radio and say that horseman shoes did my wedding, catered for my wedding. The next morning, my battery is running down. That is the power of the, some of the celebrities that we use. And as a small company, we are enjoying a lot of what I call social equity or social capital. Then um, Giftia Fenidazi passed through to buy for a glue. They were doing an event with um, Made in Ghana. So they came through. Then we have um, former CTF Joy FM host Kojo Okonkroma, famous actor Majid, and the current host of the Joy Morning Show, Kojo Yangsen. Bernard, are you looking at him? <laughs> Yes, one of the strategies that we also use, um, when you do something good, you are trapped. We have had a lot of media attention within the last two years. So I had, um, DWTV actually featured me last year, October, myself and some other lady representing the West African region. And when this was aired, I didn't listen, but I had a lot of feedback, mailed from Southern, the Southern Africa region, Make, a lot of people making inquiries. But our challenge is we are not logistically ready to be exporting. You produce a bag of shoe and you want to send it out. The cost of shipping is even more expensive than the shoe itself. So going forward, we are looking forward to expand so that we take on the, um, the African market. And I must say that the prospects are very, very, very encouraging. One of the ways that we also interact with people are our events. We do events and we create an atmosphere, not necessarily for us, but also an atmosphere where our patrons can come and network, meet people, meet friends, and socialize. So last year, March, we launched our 2013 collection at the African region. And these are some of the pictures. It was one, it was the first event that we had, and we were overwhelmed with the turnout. According to African Regent, um, the 
Previous exhibitors had pulled about 50 to 100, but we told them that we were going to bring Accra to African region. And indeed, we did it through the power of social media and few interviews that um, Joy FM and CTFM granted us. So these are pictures of our events. And in April 2014, this year, we launched our shop at Kokumlimli, and we managed to bring some heavyweights in politics and in industry to the event. And also some diplomats from the American, Netherlands, and the UK embassies. I personally devote my time in sharing the horseman story in inspiring other young people. I think through that, apart from inspiring them, it also build up a new community for me. Because those young people are the same guys who in the next two, three, four, five years will graduate to become the middle of the working class. So we, we catch them young, they say. And then um, finally, no, no, not yet, we have, we have had a lot of recognitions. And only last year, we had six awards within the last quarter, and two prestigious ones from the AGI, Leather Campaigner of the Year and the, the Most Promising Campaigner of the Year 2013. So we hope that within the next few years, Ghana as a whole will, will hop on the online shopping thing because payment platforms are a challenge. Mobile money, most people don't have the time to walk around looking for mobile money vendors. Your money end up staying with them for a very long time till you go to their offices to take the money. So in future, we are also looking at incorporating technology in our, in our services. So um, this is the Horseman story. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tony, uh, for briefing us on the uh, horseman shoot. Um, we'll open up the floor for questions, for which after that we'll break and then we have interactions and we come back for the second part of the session. Mr. Tony, I will ask my first question. Um, why the name horseman? Is it because um, you wear it and you can run as much? Is it part of your branding? Can you explain that to us, please? It is inspired by two inspirations. The first one is literally when you take the animal horse, what are the features that come, that come to mind? They are strong, they run fast, they have stamina, and the ladies say horses are beautiful. Those are the qualities that we want to see, we want to see in, our, in, in our customers because I believe most of these young people have ambitions in life. They have a destination they want to get to. So they need a lot of determination. They need a lot of stamina to finish that race. So they need the horseman shoes. I want to ask, what components of your shoes are Ghanaian? Two, um, to what extent are you hoping to build um, what we call outgrower or if you like outproducer segment to support um, you in expanding because ultimately you would want if you want to go global you need to be able to have the capacity to, to uh, meet demand thank you what components of our raw materials are locally made now we import everything the main components are the upper leather and the sole and the glue we used to manufacture glue um, in the Punahafu region, but um, I'm told that the company has collapsed. So when we met the president, I told him that when you go to Kumasi, which is the hub of shoemaking, I think it arose because in Kumasi situated the shoe factory there. Apart from Swan Magazine, I think the footwear industry is the second biggest employer of the young people. So I told him that going forward, we should consider building a leather factory here. So I, I hope you know it comes to pass. But I am I am a member of the AGI and I was told that one man wanted to do tannery in Ghana here at Wankra. He walked around the globe for two years. It wasn't successful and he abandoned it. People say we chew our belly, but as a matter of fact, the way we chew most are important. So yes, so we don't really have enough raw materials to do leather here in Ghana. Yes. And um, 
outgrow yeah, or outsourcing. Um, I am a beneficiary of Codvet. I paid this idea to them that um, we should up the skills of the local artisans. So um, I was given some grant to train them. We have done the first training in um, business management, marketing, and um, customer care. We are looking forward to our second training, which is the skill development. We are bringing a resource person from Italy, India, or England. I think that it is something very important because most of these guys are skilled, but one of the challenges in this industry is attitude and individualism. They want to sit by their small table and call themselves master and produce five shoes in a week. That is what gives them content. When you bring them in and they see you are moving the goods, they think that they are doing you a favor. You are working so hard. They are working so hard for you. So within two weeks, they break, they break off. So um, in training more artisans, I think that we have to work their attitude. That is also very, very, very important. So the long, in the long run, tech trains leather students. So I have been there and I asked the lecturers of the department, Iran, where are the students you trained 10 years ago? Do you keep track of them? All of them have written ACC and are working in the banks, you know. <laughs> so that, that is one of the challenges. But um, starting this now, we want to change the perception of the vocation, that it is not necessarily meant for people who couldn't make it to the grammar schools. But if you have the skill, take pride in it and develop it. So going forward, we, we tend to attract students who did visual arts in school and also tech grads. Thank you.